Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. We are cooking up some post-apocalyptic cuisine once again with my sidekick, Ellie Mae from The Last of Us. You know that sharpshooter I was telling you about last time? Well, she's also an incredible cook. And when I say incredible, I mean incredible, as the French would say. Thank you. Is that what the French say? No. Incredi incredible bleu or something? I don't know. This is Anyways. offensive to all Canadians. Okay, yeah, we've just lost half of our audience in Quebec. I'm sorry. Just remember, I know a French fur trapper, the only one remaining, and uh, I got street crit. I can, I can say that. All right, guys, so unfortunately, due to numerous inflationary pressures, wholesale freeze-dried foods has no choice but to increase the price on most of their food varieties on September 18th, 2023. As the most recent CPI report indicates, inflation is on the rise again. We have rising energy costs, the Russia-Ukraine war is impacting trade, and there's many crop failures around the world due to climate anomalous. So the owner of the company and a friend of the channel, Steve Cyrus, has graciously postponed the price hike it was supposed to come into effect on september 1st so this is going to allow people to stock up before the prices rise again you can still use the exclusive canadian prepper coupon code before this goes into effect i'll post the link in the description and the top pinned comment so you can capitalize on this before those price changes go into effect and if you have any questions with respect to the freeze-dried industry post them in the comment section below and i will ask the owner of the company in an upcoming interview that we have planned so we're talking about post-apocalyptic cuisine. Wholesale freeze-dried foods makes stuff for all the rich people to put in their bunkers. From Shaquille O'Neal to Mark Zuckerberg to everybody who bought a bunker off of Ron from Atlas Survival Shelters, including the US military's nuclear submarines, they stack wholesale freeze-dried foods. This is the Cadillac of freeze-dried foods. Nutrastore is, I would say, like an A++ brand for freeze-dried foods, but this is the Cadillac. And the reason why is simple. You get whole pieces. We're talking about whole steaks. What are we cooking up today there, Ellie Mae? We're gonna be making steaks, and I've got a vegetable mix of carrots and broccoli, and then we'll get some rice on the side as well. So right now we're preparing the steaks. These are what they look like while they're still in the package and they're still dry. So taking it out of the package, it's pretty hard and brittle. So this is what it looks like when it's still dry. And this is what it looks like after it's been sitting in water. Now it's pretty pale, so we're gonna try bringing that color back when we're cooking it. But you can see it's not hard, it's not brittle. It's like the texture of meat, obviously. This is the freeze-dried sirloin steak. These are uncooked. so. What we're gonna do today is we're going to rehydrate these. So Ellie May, take it away. Show me how you rehydrate this stuff. So we're just gonna be putting the steaks in the water. Now you wanna make sure the water completely covers the steak. And they're gonna float. Now do they sink when they're done or? No, they, well, they get heavier with the more water they absorb, but they don't necessarily sink. These are really lightweight. It feels strange holding a piece of meat and it, it almost feels like a, just, I don't know, what does it feel like to you, like a rice cake weight or something? Yeah, you know? it, it feels kind of like, you know, you're snapping a cracker or something that's dry and airy. It doesn't really feel like meat. I just thought of something. You could probably even add a little bit of marinade to that. I think that would be, you know, that would be interesting because they would rehydrate with the marinade. I didn't think of that before. That's because I'm a genius. Now that's a big ass piece of steak for a freeze dried piece of steak. Most freeze dried foods are in very tiny cubed portions and the reason why is it's a less energy intensive process. If you want to do big stuff like this, it requires a lot more energy and a proprietary method when paired with their custom built freeze dryers that they use at wholesale freeze dry in order to achieve this at a manageable price point. All right, so how long did you have to leave these steaks in this water for before they were nice and plump? Well, plump. <laughs> Bruh. 
Yesterday when I was testing out these steaks, I noticed that when I left it for one hour, as the package says, it still had that dry and kind of snappy texture. Mm -hmm. So I left it for a bit longer this time, about an hour and a half. Yep. And I let it sit for longer as well. So we put them for about two hours, you say? Right. Okay, so we got two hours of the meat rehydrating. So these ones are done, right? Right. They're still not as floppy as a normal steak would be but definitely feels like a steak. So I noticed that there's fat on here too. I'm surprised they didn't cut the fat off because fat is typically something that will go rancid over time. With wholesale freeze dryers, they found a way to freeze dry that fat. They basically get all the moisture out of that fat and it's not gonna be prone to going bad. So you get about five or six of these steaks in each package, correct? Correct in a grid down situation. You're probably not gonna have butter, but you might have some oil kicking around. If you have a non-stick pan, there are plenty of ways to cook steak. For the sake of going over and above, we're gonna use some butter, we're gonna use some spices, and what do you got in this little jar here? I've got some oil in there, and okay. I've also got thyme and garlic up at the front. I'm not sure if they sell garlic, but as you can see behind me, they just have an infinite amount of varieties. Let's get out of, what do we got to do first here? We are going to put, it says as much as you desire into the bowl. So we'll do that. Like as much food as we desire? As much food and water. Okay. It doesn't give exact measurements. So these are resealable bags. These are Mylar bags. These will keep the food fresh for 25 years. This rice is packed in there to the nines. Like it is bursting. Look at that. I've never seen a bag so full. We got a desiccant packet and an oxygen absorber, so that's a double whammy. We've got brown rice here, and it's already cooked. We're just bringing it, the hydration back. All right, so we're just pouring as much water as we want, you said, hey? Right. And you got the carrots mixed in with the broccoli. It's looking like it's coming to life pretty quickly. The smaller the item, the easier it is gonna to be to rehydrate. So a grain of rice has a very small surface area, so it's going to absorb that water quite readily. In terms of freeze-dried rice, would I buy freeze-dried rice? Probably not. For the simple reason that rice in its natural form, uncooked, is going to keep for decades. If you store it in the right way, like in a Mylar bag in a five-gallon bucket, the good thing about this would be that you don't have to cook it because it's already pre-cooked. Right. So that saves you a step when maybe you're trying to conserve energy because having a, a stove is not going to be a luxury for a lot of people if there's no electricity, right? So these are things you got to think about. You could just rehydrate this all and eat a cold meal. That'll work just fine if you don't have any heat source. So I have my pan preheating here and I'm going to start to season these. You know, the cool thing about having it uncooked is just the versatility of it, because you can do all this kind of pre-marinade stuff. Now that we've got those seasoned, we'll just make sure it's all patted in. You want to get those spices really in there. You've just been exposed to this world of prepping food. What is your honest impression of these types of products? I think it's really cool that they're able to put whole food and turn it into freeze-dried food. They literally have freeze-dried lobster. I mean, it's really cool. Freeze-dried lobster. I don't like crustacean. I don't eat crustacean. If there's ever a creature that resembled the devil, it was a lobster. Anything that has its skeleton on the outside, an exoskeleton, I'm good with that. But for your sake, I'll eat the lobster. If you cook it, I know you have your weaknesses, but you're an incredible cook and you're a great shot. Your duty in the apocalypse is going to be security and cooking. Deal? Deal. And I'll pay you in freeze-dried food. Okay, I think it's ready. Yeah, let's get a nice close-up of that sizzle. Put that sizzle in that steak. It doesn't sizzle good. We're gonna... I want that sizzle in that God steak. Goddamn! <laughs> One thing people got to think about is in the apocalypse, right? If you're cooking food and people are hungry, people's senses of smell are gonna be heightened immensely. You gotta think about a regression to a more instinctive animal state. People are going to just be like machines that home in and lock in on smells. Just like the bears, and you know how a bear can smell things from like 20 miles away right. and it follows its nose? That's what humans are gonna be like. So I would caution against 
doing this type of cooking and the shit hits the fan, keep it a bit more low key because you may be able to conceal the sound. You may be able to conceal the sight, but you're not gonna be able to contain that smell. While you're doing that, imagine this scene. It's the end of days. You're in your bunker. You're eating sirloin steak and Justin Trudeau and Christina Freeland are outside, half naked, chanting tribal chants very loudly, banging on the door trying to get in in their post-apocalyptic steampunk tribal garb. And you are sitting there taking a bite of this delicious steak, laughing your ass off <laughs> while him and his new maiden are uh, outside banging on the gates to try to get in. Isn't that a beautiful sight? They do that on their days off anyways. <laughs> in between sacrificing children and uh, taking trips to Epstein Island, they're gonna be beating on your bunker door for this delicious wholesale freeze-dried food. And you know what? You get 15% off because I know the owner and he loves me, he loves the channel, he loves you guys, so he gives us 15% off this delicious gourmet post-apocalyptic cuisine. It's just ready to come out soon, so we're gonna put it on the tray and let it rest while we cook up the other batch. There we go. Yeah, not too bad, hey? Not too shabby. Yeah. So you're a great shooter and you're a great cook, but you don't wanna be a cook and you don't wanna be a shooter. Nope. Why is that? Well, I don't want to go into the military. Why? And I want to get paid a lot of money. Why not? You can go and fight and die for rich people. Oh, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> you know, when I used to work in forestry, the camp cook was like the heart of the camp. Everything revolved around the camp cook because three times a day, people's moods and temperament and mindset depended on the meal they just ate. So this is why cooking is so important, guys. It's, it's good to have the food stashed away, but if you have someone that knows what to do with it, it can mean the difference between people tearing themselves limb from limb in the bunker or getting along mostly well. See, now what I would do is I would do something like this. Look at this. Is this sacrilegious? Sacrilege? Are you mad, Karen? That's what I would do. A little too late, probably, because it's already what? Look at that. It's gonna absorb all that color. Absorb that soy for the soy boys. Check this out. Benchmade Adamas. My new favorite EDC knife. I also carry the Benchmade. This is the um, bug out. This knife is just a beast. I love it. All right. This is a fatty piece, but. Mmm. I'm visualizing Justin and Christina outside. Say, Nate, we're sorry for everything we did. Please, just one bite. F off. Klaus Schwab gonna be mad. Only Klaus Schwab gets the cows. Now, maybe it's because I've tried all kinds of freeze dried foods that I'm a little biased because I've tried the worst, I've tried the mid grade, I've tried the higher end of the spectrum, but this is the absolute best. Now remember, she's from a pickier generation that's probably not gonna survive, so let's keep that in mind when she gives the appraisal. So again, remember, Justin, Christina outside, banging on the door, trying to get in, buck naked, and you're eating that inside a nuclear-proof bunker 25 years from now. I would eat it in front of them. You'd just like open the blast door and Tease them? Yeah, of course. What do you truly think though? I mean, give me your honest opinion. For being a freeze dried piece of meat, it is really good. Comparing it to a normal piece of meat, you don't get the stringy kind of like jerky like texture. That's not saying it's dry. It's just that texture thing going on from being freeze dried, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't get that or you, it is more stringy? It is more stringy, but with raw meat, like fresh raw meat, you don't get that. That, that is the only difference mm -hmm. that I can pick apart. Like it's closer to jerky, but not as chewy as jerky? Yeah, if you're gonna put it on a spectrum, jerky, this freeze dried food, and then raw meat. Unfreeze dried meat. Now I'm just gonna strain off this water. You got a strainer? Or are you gonna do this West Side style? West Side style. That's what I thought. 
Salt always helps, eh? It sure does. So what do you think we should make next after this delicious meal? How are we gonna top this next time? Well, I think you guys should let us know in the comments what to make next. Okay, the most thumbed up comment will be what we make next. If we don't have the ingredients, we'll talk to the owner, we'll see if we can get them shipped out, all right? You know, I seen Anthony Blinken and the Ukrainian Minister of Defense eating french fries at McDonald's yesterday talking about World War III policy. You can't make this shit up. McDonald's is now advertising in the whole Ukraine war. I'd be scared if I wasn't a prepper. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. All right, so there we go. Wait, don't forget. It's cute. Put it on an angle. Gourmet. You gotta put the garnish on the carbs too, man. What are you doing? You get the contrast, bro. All right, guys, well, there you have it. Dun 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 dun. She doesn't like the garnish that accentuates the other colors on the palette. There you have it, folks. Thank you to Ellie Mae here for helping us out. That was excellent. Look forward to having you back. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com, where you'll find high quality survival gear at the best prices, no junk and no gimmicks. Use discount code PREPPINGGEAR for 10% off. Don't forget, the strong survive, but the prepared thrive. Stay safe.